Numbering 1,000. One thousand. When translation, when Prajapati Daksha was lamenting for his lost children, Lord Brahma pacified him with instructions, and therefore Daksha begot 1,000 more children in the womb of his wife, Panchajani. This time, his sons were known as the Savalaswas, purport by Srila Prabhupada. Prajapati Daksha was so named because he was very expert in begetting children. The word Daksha means expert. First, he begot 10,000 children in the womb of his wife. And when the children were lost, when the children, when, when the children were lost, when they returned home back to Godhead, he begot another set of children known as the Savalaspas. Prajapati Daksha is very expert in begetting children. And Narada Muni is very expert in delivering all the children, all the conditioned souls back home, back to Godhead. Therefore, the materialistic experts do not agree with the spiritual expert Narada Muni. But that, but this does not mean that Narada Muni will give up his engagement chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Chaksharan Militanjena, that's my Sri Gurave Namaha, Panchakalpata Rubyasya, Kripasindu by Hevacha, Patitanam Pavane, Yo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adwaita Gadadha, Sri Vasa de Gor Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So uh, we're hearing about the dealings between Prajapati Daksha and Narada Muni. Prajapati Daksha, one of the sons of Lord Brahma. So as a son of Lord Brahma, he was requested by his father to help him to populate the universe, to fill up the universe with living entities. 
we know the first sons of Brahma were the four Kumaras, and the four Kumaras didn't, they refused their father. When their father requested them in a similar way that they should get married and they should have progeny, they said, no, we don't want to, we want, we're going to stay children forever and we don't want to ever marry. So Brahma had to accept that because he saw that his four sons, the four Kumaras, wanted to work for self-realization. So although it wasn't what Brahma wanted, he had to accept it. He could not deny that. So Brahma had other sons, and one of them was his Daksha. And Daksha is Prajapati Daksha. So his duty is to help to fill up the universe with procreation. So he was married to this Panchajani, and by his power, he begot 10,000 sons. The first, at the first attempt, he was able to have 10,000 sons. So the sons grew up, and then it, the father wanted to arrange for them to get married. Also, you know, the father gets, the father's married, so father wants to see the son also get married. So Daksha wanted to arrange his son's marriage, 10,000 sons, but before the marriage, they must first of all go for purification because to enter into family life is a big responsibility. You have to be pure. You have to purify yourself before you enter into the family life. Otherwise, it can be very difficult. And we see today, so many marriages are not successful because the husband didn't purify himself before. Before the marriage, the, cut, the tradition was, very culture was, that the husband should go and do austerities and tapasya and do that for some time and then come back and then get married. Just like in Thailand, in Thailand, young men and Thai families, they will become a Buddhist monk. They will become a Buddhist monk and they'll go and live in the temple and they have a ceremony. The young man's coming into the temple. They shave his head. They give him the monk's dress. And he's a monk. He's a Buddha monk. And he will stay there. They'll, they'll have a fixed time. Sometimes they'll do it three months. Sometimes one month. Sometimes six months. Sometimes a year. Depends how long they want to do it. But they'll go in. They'll become the monk. And they'll stay in the ashram. And Every, they do the begging, like what the Buddhist monks do in Thailand. And, and then after the piri is up, then there's a ceremony where he comes out. He gives up the cloth and he goes back home. And then he'll get married because he's been a monk. So he's learned to control the mind and senses. And that's very important to enter into the family life. You have to be in control of the mind and senses. So Daksha had 10,000 sons, and he told them, you go and do some tapasya, and when you come back, we'll arrange your marriage. So the 10,000 sons had gone, and they'd gone to a holy place, a very holy place, a beautiful big lake was there, and many lotus flowers were blooming and there were many birds and it was a very sacred holy place away from the world but away from the material world but it was very very pure transcendental place so the ten thousand sons were there and they were doing their tapasya meditating and narada muni saw them and he thought oh very nice young man. They thought they're doing such nice tapasya, nice asset. He said, why they would need to get married? Oh. I thought, why they would go, go into their family life? But they're, they're already so nice. They're, 
They're controlling their mind and senses. They don't need to go into family life. So Narada Muni, he preached to them and he talked to them about, you know, not going into the material world, that the, the material life is not very good. There's a lot of difficulty. He, he, he talked to them and he explained to them there's another world. There's a spiritual world. And by Narada Muni's preaching, the 10,000 sons of Daksha, they were convinced. And they said, yes, you're right. But we won't go back to our father. And instead, they went back to Godhead. Prabhupada said, they went back to God. So Daksha got the news that his 10,000 sons were not coming back. He was very unhappy. Oh, no, my 10,000 sons. They've gone off. They're going to become renunciates. They're not going to come home. And he felt very bad. Anyway, by the grace, his father, Brahma, preached to Daksha. Brahma taught and told Daksha, don't worry, he said, have some more children. Then you can have some more children. You're Daksha, you're expert in getting children. So you got 10,000 last time, try again, get some more children and let them become nice uh, householders, Krihastas. So Daksha conceived another 1,000. He didn't get 10,000. First time he got 10,000. Second time he only got 1,000. So first it was the Havalashvas. Hash, 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 then it says Savalashvas. So 1,000, the 10,000 sons become 1,000 sons. So again, when it comes time for marriage, he tells the 1,000 sons, you should go and purify yourself. When you come back, we'll arrange your marriage. So the 1,000 sons all went, and they went to the same place where the 10,000 sons had gone before. And the 1,000 sons went there, and they were doing their meditation and bathing there in the lake and chanting. And Narada Muni came there again, and he saw them. And he thought, wow, some more, more young men. Oh, nice young men. Why they would need to enter into family life? So Narada Muni talked to them and told them, he said, you know, your brothers, they didn't go back. You should follow your brothers. Be like your brothers. So the 1,000 men, they thought, yeah, why? Why we should go back? So they, they all went. They went to the spiritual world, back to Godhead. So this is what happened to Daksha's sons. Daksha, of course, very upset. After begetting 10,000 10, sons and then 1,000 sons, and none of them coming home, they all left home. He was very disappointed. He was very angry. So next time, he said, I won't have sons. Next time, just conceive women. We'll have girls instead of sons. We'll have daughters. Daughters are nice. They don't go away from home. They stay at home with their family. So that's what happened to Daksha. He had daughters after that. So anyway, Prabhupada explains that Daksha was expert. His expertise was in having children. Narada Muni was also expert. He was expert at saving the children from material life. He was expert in bringing them back to God. So that was the expertise of Narada Muni. He was also expert. Different people are expert in different things. 
So Daksha, Daksha's expertise was just to have the children. But having the, having the children, having the offspring, that's done by so many creatures. The pigs, they produce so many piglets. You see, but at one time, the pigs, they will produce 10 pig, piglets or more. Even the dogs, they will have six puppies at a time. So that is not the real, that is not such a great business in human life, just to have a lot of children. But Narada Muni's business, that was something very special because that was to take the people out of the material world and to take them back to Godhead. So Narada Muni was expert at that. And of course, people, not everybody appreciated that. Daksha, for example, he didn't appreciate it. He blamed Narada Muni, he criticized Narada Muni that you're taking these boys away from the home. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to cause so many problems, taking them away from their home. But Narada Muni, he's convinced. He knows what he's doing. He's the devotee. He's one of the Mahajans, right? He's one of the authorities of devotional service. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu, Komar Kapilo Manu, Pralado Janako Bishmo, Balir Vayasaki Vayam. So there are 12 authorities in devotional service. It begins with Lord Brahma. Swayambhu Narada. Narada is the second one. He's the son of Brahma. So he's a, an authority on devotional service. And He's not only in knowledge of devotional service, but he practices it himself. He, as a devotee, he practices devotional service. He's always chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Wherever he goes, he's chanting the holy name of the Lord. Sometimes here Prabhupada said he's chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Of course, sometimes. Narada Muni is more chanting, Narayan, Narayan, right? He likes to chant Narayan. Usually they show in the different movies like that, when they're portraying that kind of film about some Narada Muni, they'll show him chanting Narayan, Narayan. But Narada is also devotee of Lord Krishna. Narayan is the expansion of Lord Krishna. So Narada Muni also chants the Hare Krishna mantra. And he likes to go everywhere and deliver people by his chanting. And Lord Krishna is very pleased with him. It is said, Naham Tishtani Vaikunte Yogi Nam Ridayeshuva Tatra Tishtani Narada Yatra Gayanti Madhvakta. Lord Krishna is saying, now I am not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me. The yogis, they may be meditating on Lord Krishna, but Lord Krishna is not in their hearts. And Lord Krishna is not in Vaikuntha either. Nahamtishtani Vaikunthe. We think the Lord lives in Vaikuntha, but Krishna said, no, I'm, I'm not living in Vaikuntha. And I don't live in the hearts of the yogis who meditate on me, but I live wherever my devotee, like Narad, is chanting my holy name. That is the business of Narada Muni, always chanting the holy name wherever he goes. So, because he's always chanting the holy name of the Lord, naturally he's very dear to the Lord. Very, very dear. And he's delivered all these sons. He delivered them from material life. If there was anything wrong in it, 
then he would be punished. So you may say, well, Daksha cursed him. Isn't that a punishment? Well, Daksha cursed him, but actually it was a blessing for Narada Muni because Daksha cursed him that you won't be able to stay in one place for more than three days. But Narada Muni said, well, that's a blessing for me. I won't have to stay in one place too long. You stay too long in one place, then you start to get comfortable. You start to make, oh, this is my, my place, this is mine, and I do this here. And so many facilities you want to have for yourself. Because we're not, because we're, the, the nature of the body is, it likes to be comfortable. And we like to enjoy luxurious conditions. So the body somehow is attracted to these things. And the mind can also be attracted to these things. We know in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna had asked Lord Krishna, why do we do sinful things, even unwilling, as if engaged by force? So Lord Krishna had spoke about Raga Dvaisha Vimuktes to Indriyais Andriya. Lord Krishna spoke about Raga and Dvaisha, attachment and aversion. That attachment and aversion to the rules and regulations of devotional service is not good. We shouldn't be too much attached or too much against the different activities of devotional service. We have to do whatever Krishna is telling us to do. And don't become too much, oh, I like this, oh, I don't like that. You know, you get devotees, they have that tendency, I like that, but I don't like that. Now, I like, I like to go for prasada, but I don't like to go to Mongolarti. <laughs> and some people, I was giving class the other day, we were discussing about how some things we don't like. One of the things people don't like is to go for Harinam. They don't like to go for Harinam Sankirtan. And they think, oh no, that's weird. Oh, that's strange, you know, to go out there in the public and to let people see you chanting and sometimes even dancing. We think, oh, that's strange. No, I, I'm not going to go for Hari. I won't go for Sankirtan. But we find that the people who won't go for Sankirtan, they, they won't go because people know them. But when they go to a place where they're not known, when they go for Harinam Sankirtan, they enjoy it. They, they find it very blissful. But when they're in their own village, oh, no, no, I can't go for Harinam here. People will recognize me. They'll see me. So I'm not going to go for Harinam. But when we go foreign country, go to India, Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I mean, I think that's understandable. I think, you know, it's not a big problem that sometimes you have an identity and you have to protect yourself. Sometimes, you know, if you show yourself as being too religious also, that people will criticize you. Oh, they're so, he's so religious. Oh, he's got so many deities. Oh, he's got such big Japa beats. Oh, he's so religious. Sometimes we shouldn't, it's something that you should hide these things rather than show them. And even they say you should hide your guru. Don't make a big show of presenting your guru to other people. Because it's like you're, you're doing a, a publicity campaign, making propaganda on behalf of your guru. It's not really how it's supposed to be.
You're not supposed to do that. People do it, but it's not correct. You're not really supposed to do that. What we're supposed to do is, well, we show people Prabhupada. Prabhupada's a guru for everyone, right? Prabhupada's the founder. Uh, bring people to Krishna in that way. But if you make a big show of being religious, in, the, in front of people, I have many deities. Oh, I have my, we're just making, I have so many books. Sometimes you see people have so many books, who never read them, but they have a lot of books. Yeah. They make a show. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not very good. So like that, sometimes we have to be a bit cautious about what we do, how we do it. We like to practice Krishna consciousness. We like to do things. So Narada Muni, he got himself in trouble. I, he th Daksha thought, I'm going to curse him. But the, when Daksha gave the curse, Narada Muni thought, very nice, because Daksha cursed Narada Muni. You will not be able to stay in any one place for more than three days, for more than a short time. You, you won't be able to stay long in any one place. Narada Muni thought, oh, very good. I won't get entangled in any one place. It can be detached. All right. When you stay a long time in one place, you accumulate. You collect more and more and more things. What? Right. Marichi Prabhu knows about this. You stay in one place and you collect more and more every every year. Somehow you get a bit more. Yeah. Even me. As a sannyasi, sometimes people come and they give you this and they give you that, and you get things, you know, and and, and it, 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 you accumulate. So you have to regularly give things away. You know, <laughs> you have to make a point, get rid of, get rid of things, give them away, give them to this, give them to that, and then this way, try to keep yourself simple. Just keep the basic needs. Don't accumulate more than what we need. So Narada Muni was appreciating Daksha's curse. Very nice. I won't have to stay long one place. So sometimes the curse is good, you see, like Nala Kuvera Mani Griva, they got cursed by Narada. Sometimes Narada gets cursed, sometimes Narada curses. <laughs> Just like he cursed Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, become trees. And they had to stand as trees, but it was good for them. They became devotees and they were blessed with the darshan of Lord Damuda. So, like that, we have to understand curse. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got cursed. The Brahmana curse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you will never enjoy material life. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, oh, very nice. Hmm. So sometimes cursing good helps us to go to Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Comments, Marichi Prabhu. Yeah, we don't have qualified brahmanas in the Kali Yuga. There are no real brahmanas. That's why we don't do the yagya. She cannot do. Ashwamedha and Gavamedha, Yagnas, we cannot sacrifice animals in the Kali Yuga because we're not able to chant the mantras properly. 
So it's, it said, Kalo Sutra Sambhavaha, that in the Kali Yuga, everyone is Sutra or Lok. There's no real Brahmanas because to be the real Brahmana, they have to, they have to do the samskars. And people don't even know what are the samskars. They didn't even know they're supposed to do samskar before you can leave a child. So we don't have real Brahmanas, but you know, we can try to become something like a Brahmana by the process of initiation. Anybody can become a Brahmana. Sanatana Goswami quotes the scriptures that just like bell metal can be made into gold by the alchemical process, anybody who is properly initiated and trained by a bona fide spiritual master, then they can become a Brahmana. So you have to get initiation and you have to get trained also. Then you become the Brahman. Get the training, you come and associate, they do service in the temple, be with the devotees, be with the Brahmanas, the senior Brahmanas, and train you to cultivate the Brahmanical quality. Narada, one who gives Narai. Nara da. da means to give. He gives Narai to everyone. He's giving God to everyone. That's the meaning of the name. Uh -huh. Yes, Prabhu. If someone initiated and then could not go to the Brahminical uh, initiation uh -huh. and then they left the world, what happened to them? What happened to them then? The next life or what? Well, what happens to someone not initiated and what happens to them in the next life? Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita. Yam yam vapis maram vavam chajite anti kalevaram. Whatever we remember at the end of life, then we'll go to that situation in the next life. So it's not just only that because we're initiated. So it's up to everyone. You have to train the mind to remember the Lord. If we want to get, but it's, it's Bhagavad Gita also said, if you die, in the mode of goodness, then you go to the, the higher planets. And if you die in the mode of passion, you'll come back to this place. And if you die in the mode of ignorance, you go down into the lower regions and you may take birth even as an animal or even a, a plant like a tree or something. That's when you die in the mode of ignorance. Death in the mode of ignorance means Maybe you're intoxicated or drunk or something like that. People that then they'll, they'll suffer. You'll get a bad birth in the next life. But you die in the mode of goodness, then you can go you know, to the heavenly planets and have a long life there. But Antakalecha Mami Vas Maran Varam. If you can remember the Lord at the end of life, then you go to him. So when the devotee is leaving the body, we will have other people there to chant to us. And we, will, we want to hear the holy name and we want to be chanting the holy name ourselves. And in this way, we can have a chance to go back to Godhead. Whether you're initiated or not, but certainly, if you're chanting the holy name, it will help you to get a better birth in the next life. Uh, 
Well, the principle is that at the time when you come for initiation, you've already been preparing for initiation by strictly following the regulative principles and by engaging in devotional service. So by engaging, doing all that thing, you've nullified all of those past karmas, all of the past reactions which you're carrying. They're already taken away by the practice of devotional service. So when you come for initiation, you should be like a clean sheet that the karma is already removed by your devotion, by your chanting, and by all your service which you've been doing. So when you come for the initiation, you don't have to give a lot of karma to the group. You've already got rid of it by practice, devotional service. That is why you have to wait when you come to Krishna consciousness. You don't get initiation immediately. You have to wait. And you see also Sanatana Goswami is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sanatana Goswami was going to leave to go to join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had the Brahmanas come and they had them reading Srimad Bhagavatam to him and they were doing yagya and he was giving charity, all different things. He was preparing himself to become devotee, to become full-time in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. And he was getting rid of all of his reactions from his past activities by hearing the Bhagavatam from the Brahmanas and by doing yajna and by doing charity and these different things. He was preparing himself. So we do it before initiation. We do all the, all the different devotional activities. And that way then you're ready for initiation. <clears throat> I have a question. Yeah. Uh, extending from his question just now about the, the last thought before we leave, it depends on what we think about. What if my friends or devote, devotees or non-devotees think about me? What if they have attachment to me? Would I be affected as well? Would I need to return because they are attached to me? Well, it depends on you. Now, if someone's attached to you, well, who are you attached to? Mm. If you're attached to that other person, then you have to come back. But if you're not attached to them, then wherever you go, if you go back to Godhead, you can take them back to Godhead. If they're attached to you, just like you have a husband and wife, so if the husband is a strong devotee, can take his wife back to Godhead, right? That's the system, that the, the chaste wife will follow her husband. The husband gives up the body, he's going back to Godhead, the wife will follow her husband. She can also go back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. Yes, Prabhu? If the wife left the body first. Well, the wife left the body first. Yeah, we have to see where, what, where is she attached to? What is she attached to? Is she attached to the husband? Or is she attached to what? What, what is she thinking at the time of death? It will depend. If the wife is attached to her husband, the husband's still alive, then she, she 
she may have to come back into the family. She may take birth again in the family. But she may also, if she's, you know, attached to the Lord, she can also go back to Godhead. She doesn't have to be attached to the husband. She can do, go herself directly back to Godhead. Hmm? So we're trying to prepare everyone. We all want to go back to Godhead. We want to have a better birth. The next slide. We hope. Of course, we don't want to come back because Kali Yuga is going on. Kali Yuga is very bad. Although there's some good things in the Kali Yuga, it's not very auspicious time. It's difficult for people to become good devotees because the Maya is so powerful. So we try to make this the last birth. Make this the last birth. Don't come back again. We've already had so many births. So we hope we can finish this business and go back to God. So with the help of devotees, with good association, then it's possible. Even if you cannot remember Krishna at the end of life, if throughout your life, You've been dedicated, you've dedicated your life to the service of Krishna. Then somehow you may die untimely and you were not able to remember Krishna at the end of life. Krishna will not forget you. And he will take you back to God. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.